Hello and welcome to the West Virginia Housing Development Fund Power Lender Tutorial Series. In this video, we are going to cover registration and lock of a loan via LOS import file. Remember, you have the ability to reset your password for the system from the lender login page, as well as uh, contacting your internal administrators for the system should you need additional access or access in general. And you can find those internal administrators by the request list of admins link also on the lender login page. Additionally, if you're having issues registering or locking your loan in the system, please email lockdesk at wvhdf.com that will send an email to us and we'll get back with you just as quickly as possible. You may also contact Trisha Poe direct. Let's go ahead and pop into the system. So once you're in the system, you are going to go to the new reservation section and click import new loan. You can see the file types that the system accepts here at the top of the screen for import. You're going to choose your exported file from your LOS. Open. And very simply click upload and create loan. You can see that the name given to the loan or the file is located here at the top of this gray box. Please take a note of this as this will be the file identifier throughout the rest of the process, including the lender portal. It was created successfully and you can access this file that you've just imported direct by clicking the link below the gray box. see here that it takes you to the application date just today this is a tab sensitive system which is great for an import so you can check your import integrity by going through the fields please do make sure the loan officer the originator information is correct for the file for internal reporting purposes if you are a lock desk representative or a processor, a loan officer assistant, you can input your information here, but we do want the correct loan officer information added to the lender contact section. I'm going to move from the date application field to the interlock request page. And you can see here the lender contact information has flowed through. Also remember the name that was created for the file and your borrower name will show up here after import. But let's go ahead and just move through the page. Again, I'm using tab to go through, just double checking my input integrity. If I had a co-borrower, that information would populate, of course, as would a non-purchasing spouse. You can see here that my subject property imported correctly to include county, which is important uh, because the system is now smart. So it will import or show rather uh, the acceptable income limits based upon our current limits that are available. You can see the um, home type dwelling type imported correctly with the file. This is a purchase. Just good places to check to make sure everything came through correctly. This was a home ownership uh, loan from my LOS, FHA insured, to household members. You do need to input the compliance annual income for the household as well as you know it at this point. Uh, just to verify, Again, since the system is now smart, um, it's going to show you that it is below the home ownership limit for an FHA uh, loan in Kanawha County. You do not have to include 
uh, your approve eligible or DU finding information, ID or FHA case number at this point. Uh, nor do you have to include ratios, but I have gone ahead and input those. What is required only for FHA is a credit score. You can see here my credit score is 658. If your system does not import that, you will have to input it manually. It is required, again, only on FHA imports. I'm going to tab out there. My loan will have a second mortgage. And let's fix some of these numbers. Looks like uh, this has been used as a another test. But let's make these easy to use for an FHA. We've got a hundred thousand dollar sales price, appraised value as well. We're starting at a minimum uh, down payment. Um, I am going to input a second deed of trust amount. Let's say this borrower needs $5,000 on the second. You can see here that the system populates for you CLTV. As you all know, our maximum is 105% combined first and second. Let's also say this is a first time home buyer in this county which is required, of course, for the home ownership program. That would have been a, a flag. And I'm going to move down to the locker rate section. I'm going to lock this for a typical 60 days. If I were wanting to just register but not lock at this time, I would click this box. Based upon the information that's been input previously on this screen, I should only come up with the FHA product for the first mortgage. Of course, the second will be the closing cost and down payment program, and I've just pulled the drop downs and selected each of those. It will pull in the rate for the homeownership FHA loan or whatever uh, program you've input. And before I go over and hit my submit lock request button, I am noticing that the green light is up here, which means I should be okay to submit the lock. However, I'm going to check here, you can check here, for ineligible reasons that might uh, hinder me from locking this loan. And if you'll remember, this is a homeownership FHA insured. So I'm gonna scroll to that program, and you can see here there are no issues which should stop me from moving forward with the lock. If there were, they would show up here and you could easily fix those back on the enter lock request screen. So I'm gonna to return to that screen, scroll down again to the bottom, and very simply click submit lock request. You can verify that the request has gone through by this field populating with the date it was submitted as well as the dated field to the left of the submit lock request button. Now let's say that um, our lock administrator for the day has locked this loan already. If you need a lock confirmation, you can go to print in the top right, choose individual form, type in lock and the down Button. You can double click lock confirmation. And again, if this was an instantaneous process, um, you know, let's say that this has already been approved by our system or our representative on the lock desk, you're going to go down to print, click OK, and it will provide you a lock confirmation. Again, obviously, uh, this is showing not locked right now, but upon lock, it will populate correctly. So that's great for your internal files as you move forward to processing and underwriting for confirmation. And again, I just simply went to the top right, clicked print, search for the lock confirmation, and then hit the print button down below on the other screen. 
You can check your status of this loan throughout the process by choosing this loan number, clicking status, and your information and your statuses will display here, obviously, on the status bar. Should you need to pull up another file that you've been working on, not particularly the 0258, let's say, in this case, you can also search um, for additional loans in the system by going up to Application and Open. You can type in the key direct if you know the number, or you can click the down, but down arrow and search for any other loans that are in your pipeline. Double click that and you're back in uh, to the loan. Hopefully you'll find this process easy and we thank you again for watching.